look what's in the lab guys it's the first time ever i've got my hands onto a high-end gaming laptop this is the republic of gamers g703 gr and well it's quite a monster let me tell you hashtag sponsored this is a sponsored uh, video but that doesn't mean in any form that it uh, changes my opinion and my findings let's get everything out of the box let's have a look at the software and while we add it let's just do some baseline testing and then well you never know let's see how far we can go so the g703 comes in what is my favorite type of packaging the rg type flip top lid it's a glorious bit of packaging i've loved this ever since the maximus 8 i think it was um, the laptop itself is packaged in a nice sort of uh, anti-scratch type sleeve and getting the first glimpse of the laptop and when you're working with it you realize what a beast this really is this thing is heavy it weighs like i said probably about five kgs it's half the weight of my daughter you know that, that's how crazy it is what i noticed the first time i looked at it was dual power supplies at the back here you know you plug two power supplies into this laptop and that's a crazy amount if you think about it it's got a, a 8th generation Core i9 processor, um, it's factory overclocked, it's got a full 1080, uh, 1080 NVIDIA graphics card in this so um, you can play probably most of your games on, on high ultra I'm guessing, probably ultra even. Um, in the rest of the box you know I haven't really had a look so you've got some little, little compartments everywhere, you've got your mouse, uh, each um, laptop in retail does come with a mouse and headsets and in the middle here I think we've got your dual power supplies. Now these aren't even little Mickey Mouse power supplies, these are full 20 volt 14 amp output power supplies. I mean there's two of these monster bricks. So for the CPU score I'm going to use Cinebench R15, XTU and the CPU score in 3D Mark Times Bar. For the graphics test we're just going to run 3D Mark Times Bar. It's got a 1080 in here um, but what we're really interested in is in that Core i9 processor. For both uh, the comparisons, for both performance tests, I'm going to use the Game Center app that ASUS supplies with the, the G703. Um, it allows us then to flip between two profiles, a standard profile and extreme profile, and that's going to give us our baseline score before we start to see how far we can get. All right, all right, all right. So the scores are in. Here's what I got. So for Time Spa, uh, running on the standard profile, I've got 7466, and then on the extreme profile, 7751. All right, that's just the CPU score. Uh, for R15, very interestingly, uh, 1345 and 1426. So it's quite a nice little gain there just by running you know, that extra 300 megahertz. XTU, however, was where it got really interesting and I spent the most amount of time on it. So the space standard score is 2326 and for the extreme setting, I got 2469. Now, the interesting thing is I was able to ramp that up to 5G just by changing the multiplier in XTU. The interesting, the, the disappointing part is though, the boost and score was not anywhere near what it should be. And we got a score of 2470. That's a one point increase from going from 4.8 to 5G. The reason for that is thermal throttling and um, your current limit throttling. What we need to do now is get rid of this cooling. Let's get some proper cooling on here and just see how far we can make this thing run. Uh, so let's get this thing, uh, let's get this stripped and uh, taken care of. So the first thing we're going to do is flipping it over. So a couple of things that are um, worth mentioning is your video card heat pipes and then your CPU heat pipes. You've got one, two, three, four heat pipes for the CPU and one, two, three, four for the video card. So that's quite, that's quite a lot of cooling technology within a laptop. Your battery, not the biggest of batteries. You'll also notice that you're unable 
to get to the battery without voiding your warranty. Something to consider if you know you, you think you're going to be running your laptop for for six years and you're going to want a battery replacement. We've got two little nice speakers here. They look like they're quite uh, decent little drivers on them. Um, obviously, your 64 gigs of memory, spare PCR uh, M.2. Uh, what other chips do we have in here? Right, we've got the Xbox. This looks like Xbox here, Microsoft. Okay, so that's your Xbox controller. But yeah, let's stop playing with all that and let's get. Uh, Let's get this heatsink off. The biggest problem that I'm facing right now is in order to mount the copper pots onto these two devices here, uh, I need to then be able to switch the, the notebook on. So to switch the G703 on, there's a power switch around about here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift everything up um, once I got it lifted up, then I should be able to flip the screen open and then have the screen hanging off the edge of the desk. And then uh, we should be able to access the power on an off button. Right, so using our thermal Grizzly Cryonaut on both the processor and the video card, we're just going to get the pots in position. All right, so I've got, the, I've got the laptop stripped down and flipped over. I've got the screen supported on a chair here in front so that we don't uh, put undue pressure on certain devices. I've got a Debauer a Beast Pot on the CPU and then I've got the Kingpin Gemini FOSS base uh, on the 1080. And basically all this is going to do, it gives me a container in order to pour the liquid nitrogen, which then will transfer the cold from the copper down into the, the dye of the processor or of the video card. When I, when I did some testing, I found that there were two rows of chokes here on the right hand side that were generating quite a bit of heat. So I've installed a heat sink onto them in order to just dis, you know, disperse that heat a bit, along with a trusty little desk fan over here on the right hand side, which will then help um, to move the air over those devices. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually start cooling down the processor and the um, video card. I'm not gonna go absolutely sub-zero. What I'm gonna basically do is just now run all the benchmarks and see how far we can overclock without the temperature constraints of the stock cooling. As uh, Windows boots, I'm now going to start pouring the nitrogen and I want to get my temperature down from you know where it runs on the stock cooling up in the high 90s down to maybe around minus 10. We won't go too cold in the beginning but uh, let's just see how it reacts. All right guys, so the Allen 2 session is finally over. I did have a lot of fun with this laptop using liquid nitrogen, and let's quickly just go through the scores. For Timespire, I got a score of 8817, that's for the CPU test only. Uh, for Cinebench R15, I got a final score of 1670, and for XTU, my final score there was 2729. Uh, I didn't just stop with those three benchmarks, I did go through a whole selection of other HWBot ranked benchmarks, and you can have a look in the link below this video to see all the gold cups that I did grab. So is it possible to extreme overclock a laptop? Well, yes it is, I've just proven that. You know, what we really try and do is we really try and take the hardware and we try and see how far we can push it, taking cooling out of the equation. So watching the Linus Tech um, video they posted up on YouTube about the G703, uh, where they modified the stock cooling in order to you know, run Cinebench at 5G, I was honestly, I was expecting to take the stock cooling, throw it out the window, add it into and smash the scores. In reality though, what you find out is that this G703 is very well tuned out of the box and you adding, you know, removing the stock cooling and adding Allen 2 really just helped with the efficiency. It was this efficiency though that helped me at least beat Linus' score uh, and snap up a couple of gold cups on HWBot. What I sort of expected was to have a little bit more control over that Core i9 processor. We had to use XTU to do all the overclocking 
the software was very limited other than your, your two profiles that they give you. So, Dr. Weezer's pro tip for the G703, CPU intensive applications stick to the standard profile. Everything else, run the extreme profile. You're gonna have a great experience. So unfortunately, that's a wrap, guys. At my time with the G703, GI has come to an end. I'd like to thank ASUS South Africa for making this video entirely possible, and all of you for watching. Until next time, happy benching.